Have you ever wondered what sort of underwear historical women would have worn? Or how on earth did they manage to go to the bathroom in those enormous dresses? Well, from the Regency period on through the Edwardian era, the answer to both of those questions are split drawers. In this video, we will be learning what split drawers were, how they were the secret for how women could function in those huge dresses. I'll be showing you how to make a pair of Edwardian split drawers. And by the way, if you haven't yet seen my previous video, that is all about how to draft the pattern for a pair of Edwardian split drawers to your own measurements. And I walk you through the entire process. So that will be linked in the description for you. And stay tuned to the end of the video where I share my experience with you wearing a pair of Edwardian split drawers in my daily life through a Canadian winter, no less. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the first step, as always, is cutting out our fabric pattern pieces. I chose to use a lightweight linen because linen is just my favorite fabric to work with. So using the pattern pieces that we drafted together in the last drafting video, which is linked in the description, I'm laying out my pattern pieces one at a time. I did not choose to add seam allowance to my pattern pieces, so I'm adding it now with a ruler and a pencil directly onto my fabric. I'm working with a 1.5 centimeter or 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now I'm just cutting out my pieces along the line that I drew with my rotary cutter. Finally, I'm just cutting out my waistband, which is a simple, narrow rectangle, and it's going to be doubled up. I'm cutting that out as well. And now I'm just tearing some long strips of linen to make the ruffles for my split drawers. Refer to the blog post linked in the description for further directions on how to add ruffles to your drawers. And here are all my finished cut out pieces ready to be sewn. Hi everyone, so I wanted to fill you in on some of what I learned from making my first two pairs of split drawers off camera. So some time saving tips for you all if you're going to if you're going to be making some of these. So the first thing I changed was that in my first couple pairs, I first sewed the seams and then I did a rolled hem on these edges that are left open. Now, I think this just made it more finicky than it needed to be. And I realized that it made more sense to sew the seams to sew the hems first and then sew the seams because it just makes that juncture between the seam and the hemmed area go much more smoothly. Now the next thing I learned, which I almost feel kind of silly about, was on my first two pairs, I just assumed that because this was a drafted pattern for split drawers that they meant it, they meant the crotch seam to be open like all the way down onto this corner. But after wearing it for one day, I realized, you know what, it definitely doesn't need to be that much open. In fact, when it is that much open, it's basically not even like drawers. It's more just like wearing a shift would have been in the 18th century. So since these are drawers and you don't really need it to be that open for the split crotch opening to be effective, I came up with a distance that seemed reasonable to sew the leg closed up until, and that was about at this point. So if you can visualize that, here's the inner corner and then here is where I'm going to be sewing it closed until. Okay, so I'm beginning by using my pattern piece to mark on my panels the points 
where the side opening will begin and the points where the split crotch opening will begin. Refer to the blog post linked in the description for further directions on those details. In the areas of the drawers which will be left open, like the side opening and the split crotch area, I am just sewing a narrow rolled hem, and I'm doing this before beginning any of the actual seams of the drawers and pressing that nice and flat. And now I'm beginning to pin my French seams. French seams are always a great option for any kind of undergarment and refer, you can refer to the blog post for directions on how to create French seams if you've never done it before. But basically, they are done in two passes. First, you sew a narrow seam allowance to the right side of your garment. Press it, trim it down. And then you re-sew the same seam with those raw edges enclosed within the seam, and the seam is now on the wrong side of the garment. So now we'll be creating the back pleat for our drawers. The back pleat is something that's marked on the actual pattern. So I just use those lines from the pattern. I pin an inverted box pleat and stitch along the line before pressing it closed. Okay, so let's talk about the back pleat on these drawers. First of all, it's a really interesting, really smart design feature because basically what it does is it allows there to be more fabric gathered up directly at the bum, right directly above the open crotch. So you can see it just creates these extra folds of fabric so that when these drawers are being worn, they're not necessarily just going to like open up right, right over your bum. <laughs> There's all this extra fabric here that just kind of softly falls from this center pleat. So in my mock-up video, I share with you the uncertainty and the question marks I had in my mind about what type of closure method I was going to use for these drawers. I did decide to go ahead and go with the double tie, so a tie on each side of the waist which meant that I would need the drawers to be open down to a certain point to be able to get them off over my hips and then tie them closed. I went with the tie option just because of the greater adjustability. This is what I ended up doing. So I decided to leave the side seam open on both sides about seven inches. So this pin is exactly seven inches down from the top. The top here is at the waist point of the drawers. So there's gonna be a seven inch opening on both sides from the waist down. Now, if I was going with a closure method where it was only closed on one side of the drawers, meaning there was only one opening, one slit opening, then that opening would need to be a little longer, more like 10 inches. Okay, so let's talk about this waistband. Again, my waistband is simply a narrow rectangle that's doubled up to create the front and back layers, and I did choose to interface it by just pad stitching another layer of linen to the inside. Since I am using waist ties for my closure, I am cutting those to length now because they will be sewn into the waistband sides. So now it's time to begin pinning our waistband to the body of the drawers. I will be doing this in two passes. So the first pass was sewn to the inside. And now I'm sewing the sides closed with those waist ties inserted into the sides. Trimming off my seam allowances. Before sewing the final pass, from the front, which is just a top stitch. Okay, so now it's time to add our lace and ruffles to these drawers. This part is optional, but I chose to do some of my drawers with lace and the other drawers with ruffles. 
So I chose to use some beading lace as well as edge lace. So I'm beginning by attaching those two types of lace to each other. I'm using lace insertion seam techniques for my lace so to create less bulky seams. For more information on the technique I use, check out my Edwardian blouse making video. And just sewing those two ends together to create a loop of lace, which is the right length for the bottom of my drawers. And now I'm actually sewing this to the bottom of the drawers. Again, I'm not using a French seam here because it would be too bulky. Okay, so now it's time to work on the ruffles. So I'm adding a gathering stitch, actually two lines of gathering stitches by hand. You could also do this by machine. And pulling up on those gathering threads to ruffle up the ruffle so that it will fit along the bottom edge of my drawers before clipping that in place. And I am sewing this seam with a French seam. So again, just doing it in two passes and pressing it flat. And here are the finished drawers. Really pretty and frilly. Okay, so now let's talk about my experience wearing these split drawers in my daily life. First of all, I really, really love how they turned out. I'm really proud of myself because normally I'm not, I'm just not like a fuss and feathers type of sewer. I've mentioned this before. I'm not really big on, you know, lace and just complicating garments. As much as I love the appearance of it, it's not really my forte, but I'm really proud of how these turned out. I feel like they just, I feel that they have just the right amount of lace to have that pretty Edwardian undergarment sort of look while not adding too much complication, especially since I just bought the lace. Um, I bought my lace from a lovely Etsy shop. It's really high quality stuff. So I'm really glad with how that turned out. I must say, I don't know why I even waited so long to make a pair of split drawers, seeing as how I have been wearing chemises and corsets for a few years. Split drawers really just complete the look when you're wearing a corset with a chemise and then the split drawers. Or of course, you can use the same split drawers sewing technique to create a pair of combinations where you're combining the chemise with the drawers and it's like a one piece sort of bodysuit. That's another option. And I just really love the look of a corset with the chemise and the drawers. It just really ties it all together. Now I would like to give a practical note because I'm not sure if the sewing video showed this, but when I first sewed the drawers, I left a pretty large portion of the inseam or the crotch seam open because of just the angle of the pattern. I just left the complete inseam open until you got to that little lower portion of the inseam, which is at a different angle. But after wearing these for one day, I realized it was entirely unnecessary to have that large a portion of the inseam left open for the split drawers to function as they should. So I ended up closing some more of that seam. But I'm just gonna say it right off the top. I have been finding historical undergarments to be warmer than modern undergarments. And I'm going to explain why. First of all, when I'm just wearing tights, tights aren't very thick. I mean, they're not really that at warm. Of course, I could be wearing like some sort of winterized legging or something, but that doesn't really go with most of the skirts that I like to wear. And I don't really like any of the winterized leggings that I've tried in the past. So I've usually just stuck with tights and <laughs> suffered through it. But when it comes to wearing the Edwardian split drawers, first of all, the ones I made are called circular drawers, which means that they're shaped sort of like a circle skirt. There's a lot of extra fabric. And when you're wearing these, they just kind of drape there's a lot of extra fabric that just drapes over your thighs and 
there's just more fabric there keeping your thighs warm than if I'm just wearing tights. I'm also wearing a skirt over top, so there's really just this sort of insulating effect that happens. My thighs have not felt cold whatsoever wearing this type of underwear. Now, of course, for my lower legs, when you're wearing split drawers, you can't wear tights that come all the way up to your waist. You have to wear stockings. So I found a lovely Etsy shop called Wild Rose Atelier, who's here in Canada, and I bought a pair of wool and silk stockings from her. The wool ones have been my favorite during this winter, and I wear them with garters to hold them up, and they have been so warm and so lovely and so comfortable. So all in all, I found the historical type of underwear to be much warmer than modern stuff. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining me on this historical underwear adventure. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below and like the video as it helps it get out to more people like you who are interested in it. The accompanying blog post will be linked for you in the description with the written tutorial of how to make Edwardian split drawer, as well as all of my social media accounts where you can follow me, especially on Instagram. I post on there pretty much every day so you can get real-time updates of what I'm working on. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!